Gotti Elkon with PearlSnapDiscount.com here at the Oak Cliff Film Festival with producer Mike S. Ryan. Mike, you've got a few films here, uh, very different films, the comedy, Torn Horse, Think of Me. What, what, what is it about films that, that attract you? Not just Obviously, it's not just the script. It has to be something more, it seems. Yeah, I mean, what I'm basically interested in is uh, beyond, it's not story, it's really... Um, a formal approach about how to tell a story that's cinematic. So I'm not really interested in um, just a story. Um, scripts really, to me, are not a blueprint. Um, they're just the basis for which uh, you know a visionary director will use it in order to reach something that's different than what's on the page. So basically, if it's something that could be told on a theater stage, or on a music uh, format or in um, uh, a radio play, uh, I'm not interested. So all of these films, all three of these films have three distinct formal strategies. Um, just like a lot of my films, Meek's Cutoff was an oblique narrative. Um, so basically the comedy is a film in which the narrative doesn't really happen on the screen. It happens between the screen and the viewer. So the concept of the, the story was how would a viewer's a, a reaction to this character change and evolve. So the narrative is contained within your own reaction, repulsion, disgust, and then sympathy or questioning or then self-doubt. And how that evolves is the story. So um, that's really, you know, uh, when I talked with Rick initially, you know, we engaged on formal aspects of how to tell a film story. So, and the Touring Horse, of course, speaks for itself. And uh, in terms of a, a, a formal uh, uh, element, it's really, there is no story, so to speak. It's just characters and setting. And then it's the cinema style of how the cameras moved in relation to sound and light that creates an experience which is different than any other kind of story experience. Well, talk about some of the, I mean, you've, you've worked with Ang Lee, you, t you brought up Meek's Cutoff working with Kelly, I mean, you worked with folks with Junebug, I mean, you've, you've kind of worked with a, a wide variety of people, but they all do seem to have a passion, and it, like you said, it does kind of coincide with some of them liking music and being having a musical passion as well. Yes, and it's also tied into the other aspect of trying to tell a story that's outside standard corporate culture. Um, and, and that means telling stories of people who are socially marginalized um, uh, and also take, taking a story that's on a typical type of character but giving a different perspective. So, um, you know, my basically my three indie gods that I follow are Oscar Micheaux, um, uh, the first American independent filmmaker who happened to also be African American, uh, Ida Lupino and John Cassavetes. John Cassavetes being a formalist, Ida Lupino being basically social issue driven. She made films because she was disgusted about how women were represented in Hollywood and told stories about abortion, backstreet abortion in the 50s and 40s. And so I really am interested also in content that's about uh, people in America who are generally considered marginalized. Is there a voice that you haven't been able to showcase that you're liking or wanting to showcase in the future? I'm very much interested in uh, trying to figure out African-American uh, uh, perspectives. Uh, the film we're going to be making with Rick in the fall is, takes place in 1870, uh, 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 you know, right in the wake of the Civil War. Uh, and then I'm going to be making a film also uh, in the fall with Jake Mahaffey set in Detroit about a Pentecostal preacher. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm just basically interested in trying to understand what the American persona is really about. And that means sometimes talking through voices that have been considered or would be considered marginal. To kind of end on things, being at a film festival that is on itself trying to be about the community. Can you talk to me about bringing together in your films a community of its own? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the thing that I love about being here at a place like Oak Cliff um, is this recognition that the future of film is really going to be based on communities taking control of their culture. And, uh, you know, corporate media is putting down such a strong perspective on both the news, on reality, and on entertainment. 
and the bandwidth of people's cultural imagination has shrunk to a very narrow margin. And independent film is the only way to break out of that margin to give actually alternative views of what it means to be alive right now. And the only way it's going to happen, because it can't really happen through financial means, is that communities like this take charge and say, just like they do with the, f slow, with the food movement, look, we're not going to eat, you know, bad food. We're not going to eat Monsanto grown seeds. We're going to actually be aware of what we put in our body. Likewise, we're going to take control of our local architecture and we're going to really choose what kind of culture we have available because nobody else is going to watch out for us. And corporate, if they have their way, are just going to shove the most narrow bandwidth down our throats. So it's really, it's really inspirational to be here in a place like Oak Cliff because this is the future of independent film. This is how it's supported and this is our audience and this is why I would do it. I think that's how we end it with Mike S. Ryan here at the Oak Cliff Film Festival on PearlSnapDiscount.com. <laughs>